Welcome back to Purine Degradation on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we talked about the degradation pathways for the three major purines, IMP, GMP, and AMP, and we saw that each of these uh, pathways actually converges at the formation of xanthine, and then xanthine oxidase's second activity converts xanthine into uric acid. And I went into a pretty lengthy discussion about how uric acid is not degraded any further in humans because even though we possess a urate oxidase gene, the, the protein product is non-functional. In fact, the mRNA is mostly non-functional because we have a splice site mutation. So let's actually talk about um, in other organisms that may actually possess the enzyme urate oxidase, how other types of organisms degrade uric acid further. How do they get rid of purines and, and nitrogen products? All right, and so like I said, we're gonna talk about the degradation of urate, and we're gonna see that other animals may excrete these products as either allantoin, allantoate, urea, or ammonia. Now, here's the first enzyme that would normally be occur directly after uric acid, and it's urate oxidase. Now, again, humans are unique in the sense that we actually don't have a functional urate oxidase gene. It is transcribed, as I mentioned in the previous video, but again, we have two nonsense mutations at codons 33 and 187, and there's an aberrant or mutant splice site that prevents the mRNA from completely splicing out the introns, and therefore the protein products don't form. And even if they did, they would be much shorter due to these nonsense mutations, which remember a nonsense mutation is a mutation that encodes a stop codon rather than a normal amino acid. And when you encode a stop codon, the translation stops and you end up with a much shorter protein. These really don't even form. You can't even fully splice out the introns due to the splice site mutation. So humans and maybe upper level primates will say, we, de we excrete our uh, purine degradation products as uric acid, okay? Now, there are some other organisms that do excrete uric acid, such as birds, reptiles, and insects, but they excrete uric acid not because they have a mutant urate oxidase gene, they just don't have the, end, the gene for urate oxidase, okay? So it's different than the reason we do it. We do it because our urate oxidase gene, which is present, is non-functional, it's mutant. These organisms, birds, reptiles, and insects, probably do it because they just don't have the gene in the first place, okay? But all these organisms, including us, excrete uric acid. Now, if you are an organism that possesses functional urate oxidase, you would convert uric acid into allantoin. And in fact, most mammals are gonna stop here and excrete allantoin. So most mammals do not express any of these other three enzymes, allantoinase, allantoicase, and urease. So an animal such as a cat, most likely, would excrete allantoin because they possess urate oxidase, but neither of these uh, terminal three enzymes. Okay, so most mammals, rats, are gonna excrete allantoin. Now, some organisms have a second enzyme, allantoinase. Allantoinase is a hydrolytic enzyme, and it's going to break this bond between this carbon and this nitrogen right here in allantoin. And what you end up with is the product of allantoinase, allantoate. And allantoate is gonna be the purine degradation product that's gonna be excreted by most bony fishes. Okay, so uh, bony fishes would be your osteichthys, okay, so like a, a cod or, a, you know, a salmon. Those are bony fishes, they're probably going to excrete allantoate, and they would also not express the following two enzymes, allantoicase and urease. They would stop at allantoate and excrete that. Some organisms have another enzyme, allantoicase. Allantoicase, what it's going to do is it's going to actually, these regions in red, these are actually just urea molecules. It's actually going to hydrolyze off both of these, so notice one of the products are two molecules of urea, and all that's going to be left is the central carbon with the carboxyl, which essentially is going to become glyoxylate. Okay, now glyoxylate will have to be degraded further, but presumably organisms that uh, that actually can metabolize allantoate to urea through allantoicase are going to have something to process the glyoxylate. Okay, and that's going to give you, like we said, urea. Now, organisms that will excrete explicitly urea 
are going to be amphibians and cartilaginous fishes. So for example, amphibians, frogs, toads, salamanders, cartilaginous fishes is basically going to be your chondrichthys such as sharks, rays, whatever. Those are going to excrete urea as the purine degradation product, but they will not express the enzyme urease. Okay, that's why they excrete urea. However, there are, this is getting repetitive, some organisms that express the enzyme urease. And you can probably imagine what urease is going to do. It's going to break apart urea. And it's going to break it apart using two molecules of water, it's a hydrolytic enzyme, into four molecules of ammonia, since there's two ureas, and two molecules of carbon dioxide. Okay, And obviously carbon dioxide is carbon dioxide. But the ammonia, this is going to be excreted as the final purine degradation product by marine invertebrates. Um, so usually the th those things that live at the bottom of the ocean, um, such as corals and things like that, they're going to be degrading purines all the way to ammonia because they have all of these enzymes, obviously, and then they have all four of these enzymes, and so they're able to completely degrade the purine into ammonia. All right? And that's pretty much all there is to purine catabolism. Uh, the interesting thing about purine catabolism that's different than that of pyrimidines is pyrimidines pretty much the degradation pathways are complete. Um, we don't have any situations where they truncate really that much. Um, humans can pretty much completely degrade all the pyrimidines, U's, T's, and C's, but with purines, we have a variety of different end products that are excreted depending on what organism you are, and it really has to do with the arsenal of enzymes that that organism has. All right, hopefully this video made sense to you and you learned a little bit in it. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Um, we're eventually gonna go into pyrimidine catabolism. Join us then.